Welcome to the Intuitive Websites Internet Marketing Podcast, bringing you the country's top podcast on the subject of internet marketing. Welcome back to the Intuitive Websites Internet Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Glenn Thayer, and with me today, I have Thomas Young, CEO of Intuitive Websites. Uh, you know, one of the biggest things that go round and round and round out in the, the web world is how much does a website cost? And I, I know for people who build websites for a living, that can be one of the most frustrating questions that they ever get because... The answer usually is, well, it depends on what you want. And uh, right. so, so today we're really going to talk about website budgets and really look at, at obviously what's going on in the economy today and all the different things that you can take advantage of, anything from social media to outsourcing to doing it yourself and, and all of that. So you know, let's start with the big question, Tom. How much does it cost to build a website? Well, that's, that's an easy question to ask, <laughs> a complicated question to answer. But one thing I can tell you is that um, it is easier to answer it now than it was when we started in this business about 12 years ago. Back in the late 90s, uh, website pricing was all over the board. I mean, you could have an intern come in and do your website for free, or you could have a high-end agency build a hundred grand website, mostly going to design charges. And I'm not talking about the most complex websites in the world. I'm talking about a basic corporate website. So um, what, what's, what's really happened now over time is all of this has, has, more, has been more stabilized now. Um, the, the, the way websites are built um, has become, become more standardized. A good website developer takes about the same amount of time as the next good website developer. And so because of that, uh, it's, it's a little bit easier to develop a budget. But what's complex about it <laughs> is getting the client to understand how all this works. Um, you can't really have fair pricing unless you have educated buyers. So that's a, a critical part of, of website uh, marketing and development. So when you ask the question, what does it cost to build a website, the next question needs to be not so much what you want the site to do, we'll get to that, but what kind of platform do you want the site to sit on? And we, we've got other podcasts that talk about these things, but do you want a CMS system so your, your staff can edit the site from any browser? Explain CMS really quick for our listeners who may have skipped ahead on some podcasts. Right. The content management system is what CMS stands for, and that is a website that is a dynamic site that can be edited from a browser um, just with a, a user ID and password. Like so anybody on your staff Drupal, can edit Joomla. Does does WordPress come in come into a CMS? You yeah, it's a pseudo so, CMS. Right. The there's there's two kinds functions. of CMSs. There's open source, which you mentioned three of them: WordPress, Joomla, and Drupal. The three most popular, really. And then there's uh, proprietary CMSs like Cold Fusion or um, uh, the Microsoft products uh, like .NET. But they're all CMSs. Any a user can can edit the site uh, from a browser. And then there's HTML, coding by hand, HTML. Or there's off-the-shelf software programs like Dreamweaver where you actually use the software program to edit the, the website. So you have to determine what platform to set on. Go back and listen to the podcast we did on, on website technology because we are big fans of CMS. In particular, we use Joomla CMS, and we're using WordPress for blogs, although WordPress now is starting to, to make a push into regular website development as well. So... Um, yeah, so, so once you've determined the, the platform the site sits on, then the next step is what is the functionality needed within that technology? More and what you want it to do. What you want it to do. And one of the biggest parts of that is do you want e-commerce or not? So that's going to be real important. Secondly, then, is to determine the amount of design work you need. And design really comes in two flavors, either off-the-shelf template designs that can be tweaked a little bit to match what you need, or design from scratch. So design from scratch is many, many times more expensive than the template version where you take an existing standardized look and feel and you modify it. In fact, um, in the actual development of the website, a from scratch design is going to be the most expensive thing that you pay for because it is the most time consuming to have a designer create something from scratch. It's going to be like an artist doing a painting. I mean, they literally start from scratch. Now, if we take this off before we go too far on the design function here, there, there are two elements of design. You actually have the physical coding of the code, depending on how in-depth and, and unique your site is, versus the graphical content from a designer standpoint. Right. Uh, there's, those are two different functions, because obviously having a pretty-looking website is one thing. Having a functional website is more of a design of the programming. 
That's right. And, and so you have the technology and the design trying to work together to create this budget. And it's a pretty straightforward formula. And that is it's the amount of hours you put into this to get it done. And that's why, you know, that's why the pricing has more or less stabilized because a lot of people now are using CMS systems with template designs that can be repeated. Um, and so pricing in some ways has come down because of that. And des developers and designers are much more efficient. But once you get through those first two steps, the third step is the components of the website, which would include content, graphics, photos, videos, other media, other elements, audio, whatever it might be. Here's the thing about the uh, website components. They can be far more expensive than the website itself. And take into consideration video, for example. You might produce a, a website for under $5,000, but that website might include video production work that's tens of thousands of dollars or photography that's thousands of dollars that's included in the website. And it should be that way because users don't come to your website to see the colors of your graphics on your menu system. <laughs> they come to a website to see the photos, the content, the videos, and get the data and information. You know, and that's actually another, that's a, you bring up another point there with video. Video delivery is a completely separate topic as well. I'm sure we'll be having a podcast on that. Yeah, where do you host uh, the video and how much bandwidth you take? And I think a lot of folks out there that have not been in the web industry for a long time just think, well, I can just throw it on YouTube. It's free. Yes, no, we, we, uh, we're working with a, a, a new client that, that sells music online. They have over a million downloads on their website, and they pay um, over $5,000 a month just for hosting fees to cover the download charges from all that bandwidth and all that uh, heavy-duty uh, music uh, downloads that are happening. So absolutely, that's a whole other ballgame. Because um, if you want it to come, if you want a video to come in and stream it and make it look like something you would see on Hulu.com or one of the streaming right. services, you need to bring in a streaming company like Bright Cove or something like that to be able to handle that, and they're the ones that handle your high-end bandwidth. That's right. So, the, so these, are, I mean, these are just some of the basic costs in, in putting a site together. Um, and, it's, and the thing interesting thing about website developments is, is that, that licensing fees and software fees and, and hardware fees and things like that, those are a lot for, uh, mostly a thing of the past, with the exception of, of hosting and bandwidth that we just talked about. Almost everything to do with the website is based on the hours put into the project. So if you're going to ask how much does a website cost to build, then you need to spend the time to sit down with these folks and say, explain to me what it's involved in doing this. And once you see that, you'll get a sense of that the website pricing is very fair and, and pretty much based on someone's time. Well, as far as breaking apart the website to find out exactly how do you get break it into a budget to come up with a budget? I mean, what are the, some of the things that, that our listeners can do to say, okay, I want to come up with a budget. I want to redesign my website. Um, I, I know we. I probably make a broad assumption when I assume that most of our listeners do have a website of some sorts online. Yeah. And, yeah, and so looking at that, they say, okay, I want to redo it. I want, I want something new. How do you start building the budget? Well, you know, what's interesting that we found over time is that you really can carve up a website into several different um, things. And, and they, they stand alone pretty well. So if you just do one or two of them, you're getting tremendous value. Um, look at our website, uh, the fourstepprocess.com website, because right there you'll start to see some of these elements. And even as you pull these elements together, be thinking about ROI. And we have a resource on our website um, that's an ROI calculator. And if you click on resources on our left nav, you'll see it at the first pull down there, ROI calculator. Go into this calculator and play around with it and put in different um, web marketing spend amounts. And if you, you know, think about this calculator for monthly return, divide up the cost of a new website into 12 months or six months or whatever you want. And then you can get a, a, an idea of what kind of potential return can I get from my investment. And then use the calculator, kind of use it backwards, to determine your budget before you go in and, and say, this is how much I want to spend. You have a sense of how much you want to spend based on the potential return you're going to see. Having said that, there's a few elements that, that I want to talk about. One standalone element is strategic planning. And we've talked quite a bit about web marketing plans and that sort of thing. That stands alone. Design elements stand alone. The technology platform and the coding of the design elements 
they stand alone. I'd increase functionality to a site. It also stands alone. And then the concept of e-commerce or a catalog website um, is, all, is an additional function. Uh, and then the actual writing of the content or the transferring of the content and placing it on the website, that's a separate budget as well. And finally, the, uh, the photography, the, the video, audio, all the media, the additional uh, flash components, all of that stuff is a standalone budget as well. And then keep in mind, once you launch the website, you've got to put time and effort into marketing it. So right there is, is a good six or seven, maybe eight different areas that can all be lined out and budgeted to develop this website and make it happen. And that could be done very simply by contacting the agencies that do each individual piece of that. So you can get a quote for what you're looking for from design elements, from graphic designer. And then if you have a copywriter for the written content, the photographer, the videographer, any, any of those people, you can get individual quotes on, okay, what would that be? That's right, and it's a good way to do to do it too, because you got to bring this team together anyway. In fact, we have a podcast on the web marketing team that you can go mm -hmm. listen to. But each part of that web marketing team would comprise a different budget, and you can also figure out what can we do internally and what do we need to outsource, um, and what can we should we do now, and what can be done down the road, um, and in fact, what can be piecemealed and done down the road. If we do one video a month, you know, do we have to do twelve videos out of the gate, or you know, how, how's that all going to work? That all goes into planning this budget. Or can we use YouTube as a platform for video delivery for right now until we build the website up where there's enough hits, enough visitors to where we say we need another solution to have streaming video on demand? Yeah, absolutely. You need to think through these things. You know, you can't think through these items and develop budgets unless you understand them. So take the time to understand what these areas are, and then the budgets will come. So once you understand that, now for, for our listeners that are out there and they, they get – quotes from people, let's say they go to different agencies and they get quotes, and they have all these varying price structures. How do yeah. they know, how do, how do they go, well, who's good, who's not, what's fair, and what's not? Well, uh, there's, there's several things that, that drive the variations in website budgets, and, and one of the top of the list is the knowledge and skill base of the web marketer, designer, developer. They, if, if, you have, if you have a strong person in those three areas or strong people in those three areas, then you're going to get more bang for your dollar and you're going to have a better return. Um, they're going to spend less time and they're going to be more efficient and they should give you um, a, a price that's, that's going to better get your return. Um, and then go, it comes also back to what kind of results you'd like to see from your site. Uh, once again, review that ROI calculator that we have on our website. Um, uh, we talked about the, the you know, you've got to understand how all this works, but one area that, that we left out I want to talk about is this concept of project management and product, project leadership. And when I say project leadership, I mean someone who can step up and make decisions about the site to get it launched, to get everything completed and pulled together. That's probably done in, best done internally, and not doing that will lead to um, scheduling problems, missed deadlines, and all kinds of issues with, with the website. So who should be responsible for that? Because that, that, that's usually where the issue comes down in the corporate structure anyway, is who is responsible for it and who has the authority to make those decisions? In, in your opinion, who should be responsible for that? Well, there, there's two levels of decision-making. The, the, the top-level decision-making, which we would call project leadership or you know, the project manager, should be high-level marketing or even top-level of the company, depending on what size business you have, because the website's that important. Chief marketing officer. Chief or marketing officer. Yeah, effect. and okay. but someone has to. Yeah, you know, they got to put their foot down and say yes or no. This is the way we're going. And then project management is the person that drives the deadline, drives the schedule, and 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 keeps people on track and keeps people uh, uh, meeting their commitments and, and their deadlines and so forth. That's a critical part of this too, because the project leader is going to sign off on things. That person might not necessarily be, you know, pushing content to get done and photos to get done, and that. So sort of it might thing. be the web marketing manager, like a yeah. specific position yeah, to, market, to make absolutely. that make that work, depending on how big the site is. Yeah, and and, and I think too, the bottom line is that if you're going to go and and outsource this kind of thing, you really do get what you pay for, and and if you go out and you you bid out two or three web you know web developers and you come back and you say let's go with the cheapest one. Well, a lot of times, you know, you think you're saving five hundred dollars, but you're creating five thousand dollars in headaches. So, you know, that, that you really do get what you pay for in this area. But what are your thoughts as far as using 
using services like elance.com or using the freelancers that are around the world where you can actually put your project out to bid. What are your thoughts on that? I think if you have a good um, project leader and project manager and you have a good strategic plan for what you want done on the website, that's an excellent way to go. Where you get into problems is where you go to Elance or you go somewhere like that and you start to pass off strategic decisions to a freelancer. <laughs> and this happens all the time. So the freelancer might come back and say, what is your tagline? And you might say, I don't know. What do you think is a good tagline? Well, that, that doesn't work. No, you need to have all of this done in your, in your plan before you approach a freelancer. Um, strategic planning is critical. And that should be done on the client side, not on... Well, you can hire. I mean, we do that kind of work. Other people do that kind of work. We write web marketing plans. The plan should be done before you go out and fill in the gaps of who's going to do the work. Okay. Well, folks, you, as you know, every podcast we have an action item plan. So, Tom, what are the action item plans for this podcast? Well, I was going to run through, um, first of all, a few of, of our budgets and how we're currently pricing. This is um, May 2010, <laughs> but uh, I, I don't see a lot of this changing. But our average website price is around eight to $10,000, and that includes real complex sites that, are, that have a lot of e-commerce functionality to a more basic company website. Um, if you are a small business and you need an informational website done and you want it to look good, be professional, have good content, have good SEO rankings, all that, you probably can get a site like that done for four to $5,000. If you're doing an e-commerce website, you've got several hundred products and you need to, to do it really well and professionally and have lots of good functionality, you might be looking at ten dollars to $15,000. So in a nutshell, that's our pricing. That's just for website. That's just for website design development. And then we have pricing for marketing plans, pricing for ongoing monthly marketing and so forth. So you can get an idea of what our budgets are. And what's interesting is we've come up against um, a few competitive bids, and um, we've been pretty much the same, pretty close to the same, because we build a CMS, they build CMSs, it's about the same amount of time and so forth. So those are our budgets. So as far as your action plan, um, go back and revisit once again your goals and web strategy. Use our ROI calculator. There's a link to the calculator too in this um, on the blog on our, for our podcast here. Uh, and then figure out, going backwards, if I can get um, X amount of sales from my website, what would that justify me spending to make this happen? And probably most important of all, if you're going to think about what a website costs, then you've got to get educated because you cannot go into this process not understanding what you're getting into. And in fact, we've seen so many of our clients get into a situation that they didn't understand and ended up paying a lot of money and end up with a website that didn't meet their goals. Don't find yourself in that situation. Get ed educated about web technologies, design, marketing, content, all those other issues in web marketing. And bottom line is know what you're paying for um, and realize that you know you pay for what you get <laughs> so uh, good luck with your website budgets and, and this is also an area where we're happy to help out if you're developing a new website and you want some input or you want us to look at a quote you've gotten or have us compare against that quote we'd be happy to do that this has been an intuitive websites internet marketing podcast for more information and to see all the available podcasts and much more, visit intuitiveblog.com.